This video series is intended for new racers. This is Mike at the Sports Car Hobby Shop. Today we're going to talk about sticking to the plan. We're going to uh, discuss what you should be doing in the weeks leading up to racing. We're going to talk about car prep specifically. We're going to talk about getting your plan together for the weekend. We're going to talk about the overall plan for the race, and we're going to do that in 10 minutes. So hang on to your hats. Let's get started. Plan for the car setup and preparation and in the off season. Plan for the weekend and your overall race strategy. The first thing we're going to go over is the plan you're going to put together in your off season and between races to address any concerns you have uh, with the vehicle, making sure the vehicle meets compliance, uh, making sure it meets minimum weight, chassis setup, and equally importantly to all of this combined is the driver's comfort inside the car. I can't tell you how frustrating it is to buy a new gadget or gizmo and you can't reach it when you're strapped into the car. Also, you want to make sure that you can reach and cut on your cameras. You want to be able to reach the fire suppression system. You want to make sure that all the safety gear works on you in your car. You also want to make sure, and this is the most important part of all of this, you can get out of the car safely in the event of an emergency. So practice, practice, practice. You should be dealing with all of that now in the off season. Get to it. Rules compliance. You want to make sure you're legal. You want the car and driver to be at minimum weight at the end of the race. Chassis setup and driver comfort. We will go over chassis setup extensively in another video. Next, let's talk about the plan for the weekend. Don't show up to the track unprepared and with a car that needs to be worked on at the track. If at all possible, try to get all of those little things nailed down because these are mechanical vehicles. Things will spring up on you. You'll find a leak. You'll get a soft brake pedal. You'll notice that, oh goodness, the car's not stopping as well. Maybe I should check the brake pads. All of these are things you should have already checked, but that's why you want to build in that extra time and don't have to rush around fixing other things only to find these things. So try to make sure that you've addressed all of those things. I have a checklist that I go through in the off season. And I also have a checklist of all the things I need to address on the car and all the tools I need to bring with me to the track in case I do need to work on the car. But I always try to assume that I'm bringing those tools so I never have to use them. Most of the time that is the case and that's what I would encourage you to do. Make that list, stick to the plan. Don't show up at the track with something to fix. There will be something to fix. Make your goals for practice and stick to them. And again, qualifying. Make sure you know what you're driving for. When you get out on the track, you need to think in terms of what I want to accomplish during the practice session. Uh, with NASA specifically, you don't get that many uh, opportunities to get on the track and figure things out unless you've done the test and tune day the day before, which I encourage. But you want to pick the one or two areas where you know you can either gain the most time or you're having an issue and focus on those. If there's one specific corner, you've got four or five laps. Try to get that corner nailed down. Watch someone else who is doing it well and follow them around the course to try to figure out how you can pick up time and improve the, uh, the corner's performance. Um, also, this gives you an opportunity to gauge the field strength for your competitors. You'll be able to see what others are doing and how they are doing, and it'll tell you specifically how uh, you're, you're going to be able to perform for the weekend as a, uh, compared to those who you're competing with. So you want to make sure that you get an opportunity to kind of Pay attention to what others are doing and be sure to check their lap times when you come in. During qualifying, you need to have that plan in mind of where you want to place 
on grid for the start of the race. You now have some practice lap times. You've been able to observe the guys or girls you're racing with, and you should be able to have a sense of where you might fall within the competitors. So now is the opportunity for you to go out there, lay, at, lay down a couple of really good laps, and uh, get a good starting grid position for the race. So now we've moved through a couple of different key areas all the way up to the grid. Now you're getting ready to race. Is it a flying start? That's a little bit different than a standing start. Um, my rule of thumb for flying starts is I am putting my bumper uh, two feet off the bumper of the guy in front of me. And if he's going, I'm going. I'm assuming that that's what everyone else is doing. And you need to make sure that everyone around you knows that you know we're all going to be running for the green flag, but we can't pass anyone before we cross that start finish line. You want to make sure that you, you get as good a run on that start as possible, but as cleanly as possible. If it's a standing start, that's a whole different ball of wax. Um, I like to bring my revs up to about 2,500 RPMs. As soon as they pop that flag out and get ready to drop it, as soon as I see arm movement, I'm gone. Um, that takes some practice. I recommend eye racing for that. Uh, it's been uh, really good for me to practice my starts using eye racing, and um, it's why I, I really enjoy the standing starts and I do them pretty well. Um, during the race, something that uh, several new racers have asked me over the last year um, are the what happens, what ifs. This plan that you're going to develop will help you stick to a set of routines that will help you be consistent. You want to make sure that if you are consistently running a 220 on VIR and you know that you can consistently carry 88 miles per hour speed around turn 10, now is the time to lay down that consistent routine. You're not going to go out there and be some hero and carry 94 miles per hour through turn 10 in the South Bend. You haven't been doing it previously. You shouldn't start trying to reinvent things now. Be consistent. Be judicious. Lay down that 220 lap time. If you're lucky, maybe you'll nip away a little bit and you'll dip into the 219s. But your target, if you know that you are consistent, smooth, and predictable at a 220, that is what you should be doing. You should stick to the plan. So it's hot. Everyone's hot. Don't panic. Every driver is experiencing the same racing stress as you are. Every driver has the same challenges as you do. So what happens when things fall apart? Every driver spins and runs off. Every driver has to avoid some other driver's bad incident or bad behavior. It's going to happen. When that happens, you have to gather yourself up and your car up mentally. Find the corner worker, make sure you follow their instruction to get back on track cleanly. And then you gauge your position on course. But most importantly, when you get back on course, you stick to the plan, shake it off, get back to running those two minute 20 second lap times i'm really good at standing starts that is my plan get a good clean start get the guys behind me get a little bit of distance between myself and them get a few cars between me and them and then just run those consistent quick enough laps and what that means is i run just quick enough to keep that distance and separation between me and them i'm not pounding on the car i'm not hurting the car I'm just running those quick, consistent laps. I'm not trying to push the car too fast. I'm not trying to all of a sudden pick up five miles per hour in a high speed corner that I previously didn't have. Stick to that plan. If you stick to that plan, again, starting in the garage in the off season, you're going to have great, great success and huge rewards in meeting whatever those goals are. Remember, don't panic at the disco. Gather yourself up mentally, check the corner workers and follow their directions, 
get yourself and your car back on track, stick to the plan. And above all else, have fun and be safe. This is Mike at the Sports Car Hobby Shop, out. This has been a production of Mike's Sports Car Hobby Shop.